Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about some other market participants like stockbrokers, depositories, banks and clearing houses which also play a crucial role towards any retail investor's stock market journey. So do watch the video till the end to gain knowledgeable insights about the same. Stockbrokers A stockbroker is your gateway to the stock exchanges. To begin with, you need to open something called as a trading account with a broker who meets your requirement for the trading or investing. A trading account is an account with the broker which lets an investor or a trader to buy and sell shares. The basic services provided by the broker includes giving you access to the markets and letting you transact, giving you margins or leverage for trading, providing support which may include dealing support if you have to call and trade or software support if you have issues with the trading terminal. Issuing contract notes for the transaction. A contract note is a written confirmation dealing the transaction that you have carried out during the day. Facilitating the fund transfer between your trading and your bank account. And last but not the least, providing you with a back office login, which enables you to see the summary of your account in aftermarket hours. The broker charges a fee for its services that he provides which are often known as the brokerage charge or just brokerage. The brokerage rates vary and it is up to you to find a broker which strikes a balance between the fee that the broker collects versus the services that the broker provides. Next we'll look into depositories and depository participants. When you buy a property, the only way to identify and claim that you actually own the property is by producing the property papers. Hence, it becomes extremely important to store the property papers in a safe and secure place. Similarly, when you buy a share, the only way to claim your ownership is by producing your share certificate. A share certificate is nothing but a piece of document which entitles you as the owner of the shares that you own in the company. Before 1996, the share certificate was in paper format. However, post-1996, the share certificate were converted into digital form. The process of converting paper format share certificate into digital format share certificate is called dematerialization, which is often abbreviated as DMAT. The share certificate in DMAT format has to be stored digitally. The storage place for the digital share certificate is the DMAT account. A depository is a financial intermediary which offers the service of DMAT account. A DMAT account in your name will have all the shares in the electronic form that you have bought. Think of DMAT account as the digital vault for your shares. Now, as you may have guessed, the trading account from your broker and the DMAT account from the depositories are interlinked. So for example, if you want to buy Reliance shares, then all you need to do is open your trading account look for the prices of Reliance and buy it. Once the transaction is complete, the role of your trading account is done. After you buy, the shares of Reliance will automatically come and sit in your DMAT account. Likewise, if you want to sell the shares of Reliance, all you have to do is open your trading account and sell the stock. This takes care of the transaction part. However, in the back end, the shares which are sitting in your DMAT account will get debited and the shares move out of your DMAT account. At present, there are only two depositories offering you the DMAT account services. They are National Securities Depository Limited, abbreviated as NSDL, and Central Depository Services India Limited, also known as CSDL. There is virtually no difference between the two and both of them operate under the strict SEBI regulations. Just like the way you cannot walk into National Stock Exchange's office to open a trading account, you cannot walk into a depository to open a DMAT account. To open a DMAT account, you need to liaison with a depository participant. A depository participant helps you set up your DMAT account with a depository. A depository participant acts as an agent to the depository. Also, needless to say, even the depository participant is governed by the regulations laid out by SEBI. Now we'll look into banks. 
Banks play a very straightforward role in the market ecosystem. They help in facilitating the fund transfer from your bank account to your trading account. You may be interested to note that for a given trading account, only one bank account can be linked. You cannot transfer money from a bank account that is not in your name. If you have multiple bank accounts, you need to specify which particular bank account that will be linked to your trading account. Of course, you can remove the bank account and link it with another bank account of yours, but that requires some amount of paperwork. However, for the money to come in and go out of your trading account, it has to happen only via the bank account that has been specified and linked. Also at this stage, you must have realized that the three financial intermediaries operate via three different accounts, which are trading account, DMAT account, and the bank account. All the three accounts operate electronically and are interlinked, giving you a very seamless experience. Now we look into clearing houses. In India, there are two clearing houses known as National Security Clearing Corporation Limited and Indian Clearing Corporation, also abbreviated as NSCCL and ICCL, which are subsidiary of National Stock Exchange and Bombay Stock Exchange respectively. The job of the clearing corporation is to ensure guaranteed settlements of your trades or transactions. For example, if you want to buy one share of Maruti at rupees 7000 per share, then there must be someone who has sold one share to you at rupees 7000. For this transaction, rupees 7000 will be debited from your trading account and the same rupees 7000 will be credited to someone's trading account so that the sale of the share is complete. In a typical transaction like this, the clearing corporation's role is to ensure that they identify the buyer and seller and match the debit and credit processes. The clearing corporation also ensures that there are no defaults by either party. For example, if the seller after selling the shares should not be in a position to back out thereby defaulting in his transaction. For all practical purposes, it is okay to not know much about clearing houses because you as a trader or an investor would not be interacting with these agencies directly. All you need to do is be aware that there are certain professional institutions which are heavily regulated and they work towards a smooth settlement and thus efficient clearing activity. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, do subscribe the channel for more learning videos about the stock market. You can also watch my playlist on live trading on intraday and swing trading strategies where I discuss some of the logic behind executing live trades. So see you again in the next video and happy learning.